All right, so for those of you who made it, thank you for coming. Uh, today, we're gonna to talk about Google Apps. If you are not familiar with Google Apps, if you sign up for a Gmail account or a Google account, you get free and instant access to a suite of free apps that you are all web-based, which means you can access them from any web browser on any computer. Um, they are um, abundant. There are a bunch of different apps. I'm gonna cover all the most popular ones today, such as Google Docs, Google Sheets, uh, Google Forms, Google Drive. These are all basically office alternatives. So if you're familiar with Microsoft Word, um, Google Docs is going to be Google's alternative. Um, if you use Microsoft uh, Excel, Google Sheets is their spreadsheet alternative. Um, so I'm gonna go over some of those today. And if you have any questions at all, just ask them in the, um, in the chat window or you can just unmute yourself and ask and, and we'll, uh, I'll address them. I know the class is slotted for an hour and a half, but everything I'm gonna to cover today shouldn't take up an hour and a half. So I've allotted plenty of time for questions. So feel free to butt in um, and at any, any time if you have any questions. Okay, so I'm gonna turn over my screen to everyone so you can see what I am doing. The first thing you're going to do is if you don't already have a Google account, you're gonna to go to google.com and click sign in on the top right in blue here. And you're gonna click create account right to the left of next. If you do have a Google account, this is where you'll sign in. So I created a dummy Google account for this class. So I'm gonna sign in now. Okay, so if you see on the top right that this little logo has your initials or a picture that you've uploaded, that means you're already signed in. Okay, okay, so the apps, if you don't already know, you can find with this little button icon here to the left of your account profile image. So if you click this little grid icon, you're gonna see dozens of icons. So these are all of the Google apps that are included with your Google account. And again, they're all free. They all do different things. I'm gonna cover all the popular ones today, but feel free to explore um, and check out some of the ones I don't mention today. There's a lot of really cool and interesting stuff in here. So today I'm gonna to cover Google Docs, which is this blue one. That's again, the Microsoft Word alternative. Sheets is the Microsoft Excel spreadsheet alternative. Slides is Google's version of PowerPoint. Heap is a basic note-taking app which is, has some pretty cool functionalities that I'll get into a little later. Google Drive is kind of the hub of all of these apps. So any documents you create in docs or sheets or slides or uh, any of the other apps down here get saved to Drive. So Drive is, is Google's cloud storage option, if you've heard that term before. So. I guess a popular alternative would be Dropbox. If you've heard of Dropbox before, basically it's just a way to save your documents online and access them from any computer anywhere in the world that where you have internet access. Um, so with your Google account, you get 15 gigabytes for free of storage on Google Drive, which is pretty generous, especially when you compare it to alternatives, I think. Microsoft gives you maybe five gigabytes for free. Apple gives you, I think, five gigabytes for free. Um, I don't think Yahoo or any other email services give you anything for free. So Google Drive is a really, really great tool that I use all the time. And uh, I'll get into that towards the end of the class. Calendar, pretty self-explanatory. It's, it's their online calendar tool where you can make appointments and manage your calendar. Maps, I'm sure you've used before. It's just their maps, um, navigation software, YouTube. I'm sure you've heard of YouTube. I won't get into that. Gmail is their email service. Um, Google Meet is Google's version of Zoom. It's has all the functionality of Zoom. It's actually really great. Um, a lot of people just aren't aware of it, which is why I'm not doing this class on Meet today. And um, Google Photos is their cloud storage for your photos. So if you can upload all of your photos to Google Photos and access them from anywhere. 
Um, if you have thousands of photos on your smartphone, um, if you download the Google app, the Google Photos app, you can dump all those photos into Google Photos and then not and free up all that storage off your phone. So that's a really useful tool as well. And I might do a class on just Google Photos at some point in the future because it's a pretty robust app and it's pretty useful. Um, if I go below this little horizontal line here, I'm not sure if you can see that from the video. We have some more apps down here. Um, these are some of the less popular or more um, some of the more, uh, you know, niche interest apps. Um, I won't really be going into much of any of these down below, but I did want to point that out because this little horizontal line here, you can, if there are apps that you're not using frequently, you can hide them below this line and they won't, they won't show up or they'll, you'll, they'll get out of your kind of like quick access view. So, um, you can rearrange all these apps in any way you like. So just by clicking and dragging them. So for instance, if I don't use this Google Play app, I can click it and drag it, move it below that line. I'll do the same for maybe Google Meet, um, I don't know, photos, I'll get rid of photos. And now you can see that line kind of moved up a little bit now. So it's basically just a way of reorganizing it and just using the apps that you, you know, have used most frequently, move them up to the top of the screen here. All right, any questions so far? So again, you can access any of the apps by just clicking this little button on the top right. Pretty straightforward. Okay, so let's jump right into Google Docs. So if you wanna open any of these apps, you just click the app and it will bring you to this kind of home screen here. So all of these apps home screen are gonna look pretty similar on the top of the page. They're gonna have some uh, they call it a template gallery, but basically it's just a, a preview of a bunch of different templates that you can click and jump right into creating a document. You see here, there are some resumes, a letter template, a project proposal template. There are hundreds of free templates that you can check out if you click this button on the top right. The template gallery, now you can see it's broken down by category. We have resumes, letters, I'm not sure what personal means. Maybe that's like a cover page for a, a resume. Work related, so like meeting notes, uh, brochures, company newsletters, and many, many, many more. Go back. Um, if you don't see something in the template gallery, you can always click up here on the search bar and, and search for a template. You can also search for any documents you've already created in the search bar. So you can see all of your previously created documents are down here at the bottom below this gray bar. These are just a template one that I, I created for the last time I ran this program and a, a resume from a template that I created. So if I search up here for, I'll call test docs, I know that's the title, you can see in the search results is that document down below here that I created. Okay, whoops. All right, so if you wanna start just totally from scratch, um, you can click this little blank icon here with a plus symbol and it'll open up just a fresh white sheet of paper for you to start typing away. Now I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, you can always go back to your docs home by clicking the icon on the top left, which I'll do now. So now I'm back to that home screen. You can see there's another new document here called untitled document that I just created. But if I wanted to start from a template, I can just click any of these templates. I'll click business letter here. And Google Docs will just open up a template that I can start just replacing all this nonsense, all these nonsense phrases in here and start writing a letter of my own. Okay, so let me go back again. So the templates are really useful, especially if you're looking to write a resume. I know a lot of people get anxious when they have to write a resume because the formatting of res resumes is always changing and people want their resume to look you know, fancy and sleek. These re resume templates are just a great way to take all of that formatting um, stress out of your resume writing um, process and just get right into 
just typing in your information and getting it done with. So again, th these templates are really useful. Um, the letter one's useful too, if you're worried about um, maybe you're writing a formal letter to your congressperson and you wanna make sure that you have the address in the right area and everything. All of these letter templates are gonna save you a lot of time and, and frustration. Okay, so let me go back to my blank document here. All right, so again, you can see untitled document on the top left here, and you can change the name of the document. I'll call it uh, test doc number two. And now I've given it a name. Um, so now's a good time to mention um, the benefits of, of Google Docs over an alternative like Microsoft Word. So the fact that all of Google's apps work online in the cloud means they are always saving automatically. So you don't have to worry about going up to file and save every 20 minutes or something, or if your computer crashes, worry about losing all of your information. Google is periodically saving your document as you go. So it just eliminates that whole, uh, that whole worry or process. And you can see right up the top, at the top here, it says last edit was three minutes ago, which means that is the last time the Google Doc was saved. So every, anytime you make any edit or change to the document, it's going to save it immediately mm -hmm. after that edit. So that's really useful. I mean, back in the day when I was using Microsoft Word, I remember in college, I wrote like a huge paper and then my computer crashed and I didn't save it recently and I lost like hours and hours of work. Um, and after that point, I just totally switched over to Google Docs from that point on because I didn't want it, that to ever happen again. Um, so that's one really neat feature. The other nice benefit of Google Docs, um, and this applies to any of their apps, not just Google Docs, or any of the Google apps, is you can share your document with others and you can work on them together. So you can see the share button on the top right so say I was working on, I don't know, a, a draft of a, a budget proposal or something or business plan that I wanted my other business partners to be able to see any changes I've made and edit, make their own edits as well. So I can click share up here. So by default, anything you make is private to you, but you can open it up to others by typing in their email address Um, in that little bar up top or any, any, if you use Gmail already, any of your contacts that you've been emailing previously will, will say will be saved up here as well. So like, for instance, if I have Daffy Duck here, because that's another dummy account I made, but say Daffy Duck is your cousin that you email constantly, you can just start typing Daffy and Daffy Duck will show up and you can just click their name. Or if it's somebody you don't communicate with often, you can just type out their whole email address. Okay, so to the right of that, after, after you choose who you wanna share it with, they give you three different, basically tiers of, <laughs> of um, shareability, I guess you can call it. So the default is viewer. So viewer, it means they can only view the document. They can't make any changes. They can't make any comments on it at all. So if you just make something and you wanna share it with somebody, um, you can, set their um, their share level or whatever you want to call it to viewer and they can just look at the document not edit it the one below that is commenter so this is similar to viewer all they can do is really view the document but they are allowed to make basically like little post-it notes and on com they're called comments in, in google apps on the document where they think you should make edits and then lastly is editor editor basically gives them full reign over the document as if they created it. So if you want somebody to be able to edit your sp the spreadsheet or document as, you know, along with you, you want to change this to editor and it gives them full, full reigns over it. Okay, so when you click send here, it's going to send them an email saying so and so gave you permission to access this document. And then it'll give them a link to the document that they can, uh, they can open it. And you can type in a little message here as well. I'm gonna hit cancel. Um, 
So that's one way you can share. You can share via email. That's the number one way. That's what this top box is. You can also um, create a link, like a URL to share a document. So um, I'll give you an example of why you might want to do this instead. So I created, um, you might have seen it if you've been on our website recently, a Lord of the Rings virtual escape room. So I created that <laughs> in Google Apps and I wanted to share that with the public. So anybody in Sable can access it and, and play it. So I don't know the email address of everybody in Sayville, and it would have taken me forever, even if I did, to type out everyone's email to share it with. So instead, I can get a link. So if I cop click, I clicked copy link, and what it does is it gives me basically this um, URL at the top that I can share with anybody, and then anybody who can see that URL gets access to this document. So what I did was I clicked copy link, got the link up top, and then I just, the big image that's on our homepage, I just made it so whenever you click that image, you get brought to the document. So that's another reason, that's another way to share a document. Okay. So Google Apps, it's always saving whatever you're doing and you can share it with other people to work simultaneously or let others see it really easily. Okay, those are the two major benefits. All right, so everything else at the top here is all going to be your formatting um, of the document. So if you use Google Word or any text editor software, some of this should look pretty familiar to you. Um, I'll go over the top here. So from left to right, you have your undo and redo buttons. So if you make a mistake, you can do undo. If you want to undo your mistake or your undo your undo, you can redo it. You have your print icon right here. It looks like a little printer. Um, you have your spell check button right here. You have a paint format button. So what that does is, let's, let me just give you an example. So say you have some like funky text that you've created. And then you have some more basic text here and you want to apply any changes to this text to this, what you can do is um, highlight the text with the, oops, somebody's trying to join, sorry, with the, the formatting that you like. Click this copy button. Oops, oh, I did it in reverse, but you saw, I did it in reverse, I apologize. But basically it copies one formatting of one text and applies it to another. Um, you have your zoom here. So if you want to zoom in or zoom out, you can do that really easily. Um, you have, you might've seen this when I was clicking earlier, you have all your different headings here. So if you want to make this text heading one, you can do that really easily, heading two, et cetera. You have your fonts to the right of that. So Arial is the default font, <coughs> but there are hundreds and hundreds of fonts. So this, I guess this is another benefit of Google Apps. So these are just the, the built-in fonts here, but if there's something you're looking for that you, you don't see, you can click more fonts up here at the top. And Google has one of the largest, if not the largest collection of fonts I've ever seen. You can just keep scrolling forever and ever and ever and these are just all free fonts that you can just add right into your Google Docs. So like say I wanted, I saw a cool one up here, oh, forget it. Say I wanted this one, shadows into light, I'll just click it, hit okay. And now I've applied that font and it's saved up here for, for later. So anything that you add from that more fonts gets added to this list here. So that's another great benefit of Google. They have, huge library of fonts that you can play around with. All right, so again, this is font size, pretty straightforward, bigger, smaller, bold, italics, underline, change the color, you can highlight it. All of that is pretty standard. You've probably seen that in a bunch of other text editing software. Um, you can create uh, a link. So if you wanted to 
link that text to a website. That's how you do that. So if I click that, now I'm brought to that website. You can also link to other Google Docs that you've made. So you can see here, these are some of the other documents. I have a spreadsheet right here called Intro to Google Apps that I'll show you in a little bit. But um, that's another nice thing. So you can link Google, because all of your the documents you make in Google are all in that Google Drive that I was talking about earlier, you can link from one to another really easily using that link button. So if I wanted this text to say, you know, check out this document, I can highlight it, hit the link, and then click on that link. And now it'll bring me to that document as well. And you can see a little preview of it here too. So that's just another really cool feature with Google. All right. Moving on to the right of that, I can insert an image. So if I click that, I can upload one from my computer. Um, again, because it's Google, you have the power of Google search built into all the Google apps. So I, even if I don't have an app already downloaded on my computer, I'm sorry, an image already downloaded on my computer, I can just find one from the web. So I click search web, type in squirrel, click squirrel, <laughs> click insert, and it just pulls that image from somewhere on the internet in, right into the Google Doc without me having to you know, go search for something, download it, and et cetera. Um, so if I click on that again, this little upload image button here. Um, so there's upload from a computer, there's search the web, what I just showed you. Um, drive, so if there's a photo you have saved in your drive, you can click drive and you'll get a little preview of anything you have saved in your drive. You can just click it, click insert, and it'll insert that photo. Same thing with photos. I've mentioned Google Photos earlier. So you can insert, I don't think I have any photos. Yeah, I don't have any photos with this dummy account because I just created it. But if I did, all of my photos would show up here and I can insert them that way. And lastly, you can insert um, by a camera. So if, you if you're on a phone, maybe, I guess this would be more useful. You can click camera and the camera on your phone will turn on and you can take a picture and then it'll upload it to your Google Doc that way. Let me get rid of these. All right, moving on. Um, you have your alignment tool here. So again, this is pretty basic if you've ever used Google, uh, I mean, Microsoft Word or any uh, text editor, just where you will want to align it. You have your line spacing. So if you want to make a double space, you can click double, single space. The default is 1.15, I'm not sure why, but that's what it is. Um, you have your bulleting and numbering. If you wanna make it bulleted or numbered, you can do that. And the indentation is last. So you can just basically tab it over. Oops, left and right. All right, so a lot of that is Pretty basic, and I'm sure if you play around with it for a few minutes, you'll figure it out. It's it's pretty intuitive. Um, so that's all. That top row right there is all of your formatting options, right? If I go up, I have my little menu up here. So under File, you can share. There's another way to share it. You can create a new document. You can email the document, download the document. So one thing you might run into when you're using Google Apps is um, you, you might have noticed this if you used any other text editor that's not Word. Um, sometimes Word doesn't like to play with files that aren't Word documents. So basically when you go to download, they give you a bunch of different options here and Microsoft Word is one of the options. So say you have Microsoft Word on one computer and you're writing your Google Doc on another computer, say at the library, and you wanna make sure that you can save the document and then take it home and be able to open it up in Microsoft Word when you're at home, just make sure you download the file as a Microsoft Word file, this doc, docx file there. And when you go to open up Microsoft Word and you open up the document, it'll look exactly like it is here in Google Docs. All right, so don't be afraid um, that it's not gonna be compatible with Microsoft Word if that's what you're, what you're used to using or familiar with. 
Um, and it works in reverse too. So if you start a document in Microsoft Word, you can upload it to Google Docs as well and it will update it to, so you'll be able to edit it in Google Docs. Okay. Um, and uh, I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. So download, that's important. You can also save it as a PDF document, I guess. So that it, that's probably docx and PDF are probably the two you'll be using most often. Um, you can rename it, you can move it or save it to your Google Drive, either one, you can delete it. Um, and the last one that you'll probably use here other than print is page setup. And that allows you to change the document from a portrait to a landscape. You can change the size of the paper. So by default, it's just a standard letter size, but you can change it to legal or tabloid size. And you can change the margins here as well. So that's where you go to do those ch quick changes. All right, edit is pretty simple. If you have your undo, copy, paste, et cetera. Um, view, you can turn the ruler on and off. You can see the document outline. So if you're using a lot of headers and titles and things like that to organize your document, you'll see all of those listed here and you can click any of them and they'll bring you to that section of your document. So this is really useful if you're working on, I don't know, a research paper or writing a novel or something, you can have all of your chapters or sections listed here and then you'll be able to jump around really quickly around your document. All right. That's, those are all the most important ones there. Um, insert, again, I already talked about images, but you can insert a table. So you just tell me, tell you how many rows and columns you want, click it, it'll insert a table. Um, you can insert drawing. So drawing is another app of Google's that I, I'm not gonna get into today, but it allows you to do, it's kind of like Microsoft Paint. Um, it allows you to do some pretty simple sketches and you can create one right in Google Docs and share it or um, upload one you've already created from Google Drive into your document. You can add charts. So you can add a, oops. If you're working with like a bar chart or a line chart, you can just click that, add it. And I believe, I haven't really worked too much with charts. I believe you can edit it oh, open source. So yeah, it's, that's a little more complicated. I won't go into that today, but that's more of a Google spreadsheet, I guess, feature that I, I will get into a little later. Um, some other things you might want, want to be uh, inserting here, horizontal lines, just as like a nice page break like that. Headers and footers, you can add page numbers to your document uh, and a bookmark or table of contents. So those are both, I mentioned that earlier here, Google will auto-generate a table of contents based on your headers and titles and things that you've, you've inserted. So that's a nice feature as well. All right, you have a few more formatting options under format. So if you wanted to do like a strike through or a superscript subscript, you can do that as well. You can get some more fine tuning of your line space <laughs> columns. So there's a whole lot of features up here. Spelling and grammar, word count. So that play, you can play around with that. Um, one nice feature is they have voice typing built in. So if you have a microphone on your computer, they'll, it'll do dictation. So if you click voice typing, you start typing. Oh, you have to allow it first. Start typing what I am saying. Start typing what I am saying. And then it'll start filling that in for you right there. So that's another nice accessibility feature as well. Close that. Out. Okay. So the last one is add-ons. So Google Docs can kind of be customized in a bunch of different ways. So if, if it looks a little um, spar, sparse, sparse, what am I trying to say? If it looks a little plain to you, Google Docs here, because you're used to Microsoft Word with a million different options, um, chances are those options and features that you're looking for are just included as an add-on. So by default, Google Docs looks pretty plain because these are really the features that people are looking for most often. 
but say you um, say you are like a script writer and you want to have a, your document formatted to look like a like a movie script, I'm sure that there's an add-on that you can find. So you can click get add-ons and you can search through Google's huge library of add-ons. Um, I'm not sure what Scribble Writer is, but you can click one and it'll give you that, fun it'll add that functionality to Google Docs. I'm not gonna do that right now, but that's something you, again, you can play around with and there's thousands and thousands of add-ons. All right, any questions about Google Docs? I know I just threw a lot of information at you really quickly. I'm just gonna take a drink. If anyone has a question, feel free to jump in. If you do, make sure you're not muted if you do have a question. <laughs> A quick question I got for you, Alex. So what you were telling us here, we don't have to worry about saving anything or documents will automatically save? Right. So you can see up here, last edit was two minutes ago at the top. If I click that, it'll open up what's called version history. Yep. And I can see like a timeline basically of every save that Google Docs has made. And it will give you a little timestamp too. And I believe if I click any of these, it'll bring me back in time to that point. Yeah, you can see here, this is when I added the chart or the table rather. So that's another really useful feature as well. If you made realized you made a mistake way back, you can actually kind of go back in time through this version history and go back to that point. But yeah, as long as you're connected to the internet, anytime you make any edit at all in your Google Doc, and again, this applies to any Google app, Google Forms, Google Sheets, anything. It will save that edit and put it in this version history. So it's a really, really great feature. Good question. Okay. Any other questions? Nope. Okay. So you might have noticed this little bar on the right-hand side here with these icons. <laughs> so some of Google apps have little shortcuts built in across all of your Google apps. So the calendar, keep and tasks, and I believe you can get even more with add-ons. Um, but if I click say keep here, a little sidebar will open up and I'll have, this is basically like a quick access to my notes. So if I have, you know, important, um, business things, I don't know. I can have all my notes here. And if it's something that I'm constantly referencing in my Google Doc, I can just click it and just reference that information right there. Um, another example is your calendar. So you have quick access to your calendar. If I click that, my calendar is going to be pretty empty because I don't have much, I don't have anything entered into it yet. But It'll give me a quick access to my calendar. If I did have events um, in my Google Calendar, they did show up here. Obviously, again, because I created this account for this class, I don't have anything going on. But if I did have any events, they'd be listed here. So I could, it was just a nice reference. And um, I can create an event too, here too. So I don't know, important meeting, 15th, noon add guests, all that fun stuff, hit save. And now you can see I have what happens to be tax day. So you can see now I have a meeting. So any of your meetings that you've created or, or events will show up in here in the calendar as well. So I just wanted to point that out. It's just a really useful feature for if, it, if there's something that you're constantly referencing while you're writing a document, um, like for instance, your calendar or some note that you've written, you, you have quick access to it right here with that opening up another window. So that is just a very brief walkthrough of Google Docs. <clears throat> so I'm going to show you now Google Sheets, which is their spreadsheet app. So again, if you want to back out, you just click the Docs Home and you're brought out. So now you can see my new documents right here. And as you're using Google Docs more and more, 
this recent documents list is going to be, you know, for me, my personal account, I have hundreds and hundreds of Google Docs. So you can change the way it's viewed with uh, these buttons up here. So um, oops. you can have it last opened, last time it was edited. You can do it alphabetical by title and you can change the view to a list here if that works better for you. So there's, there's different ways to view, change that view. All right, so I'm gonna go to Google Sheets now. So I'm gonna click Google Apps on the top right and you can see here all my apps. I'm gonna click on Google Sheets and you can see it looks very similar to Google Docs. I have my templates up here at the top. I have all of my documents that I've created below that. And I can create a blank document by clicking blank here. So I'm gonna go into one that I've already created called Intro to Google Apps. So this is the document I created earlier today. Again, I have the title on the top here. I have all my formatting bar at the very top here. And a lot of it's gonna be similar to Google Docs, so I won't go over that again. Um, and above that, I have my menu. Again, very similar to Google Docs. They do that on purpose. It's, it makes everything kind of consistent so you don't have to relearn a program every time. Um, but if you've ever used Microsoft Excel, a lot of this should look pretty familiar to you. Uh, at the bottom here, one difference between Google Sheets and Google Docs is you can have multiple sheets per document. So if I click this little plus, I can add a sheet. You can see sheet two. So you can organize, have a, as many sheets as you want. So, and you can rename these by just double clicking it. Uh, I can call this one uh, salaries. I can call this one, I don't know, marketing or something. So it's just a nice way of saving some space all within one document. Okay. So again, if you're familiar with, with Excel, um, I apologize because a lot of this will be redundant, but I'll just go over some quick, quick things. So if you want to edit any of the cells, you can just highlight them and start playing with the formatting bar up here. Again, it's all very similar to Google Docs. So you can just mess around with those and apply that formatting to those cells. If you want to increase the width of a column, you can just click and drag. So you can see emails here are kind of cut off. Just click and drag it to make some more room. Move the left and right. You can also click the header on any column and right click. And, nope, oh, I'm sorry. If you go up to format, you can format the entire column. And the same works for rows as well. If I click these numbers on the left, I can format the entire column. So say I wanted, say instead of extending this column um, width, I wanted the names to wrap underneath. I can click that, go to format, text wrapping, wrap, and now you can see it, the names, when they overhang, just go underneath instead of um, getting cut off. All right, so you can do the same thing. You can format um, by, you can format the, um, the numbers or dates as well. So say under salary, I wanted a dollar sign and a decimal point. I can highlight those, uh, the cells that I wanna format and go to format and under number, it'll give me a bunch of different default formatting options here. Um, so currency is, is what I'm thinking of, but if there's something or a special format that you're thinking of that you don't want, you can go under more formats and then make a custom format, but I'm just gonna click currency because that's what I was thinking of. Now you can see it just formatted that all nice and neat for me. I can do the same thing for date, go to format, number, and uh, let's see, say I wanted, um, let's see, not the time. I wanted the date and time maybe, click that. There we go, I added that, but I think it looked better before. All right, so again, just like um, Excel, you can, in, you can insert um, functions as well to do some quick math for you. So if I wanted to find the total of all the salaries, I can click in the box that I want to insert, insert that information. 
Um, and I can either click up here on the, this function bar on the top where it says FX, or I can just double click and start typing. Um, sum is the shortcut for adding up a bunch of cells. So I'm just gonna type in sum. And you can see here, Google's kind of uh, AI has assumed that I want to create a sum of these four cells. It's right, so I'm just gonna click that and hit enter. And now it's, it's summed up those four cells, nice and neat for me. Now, if I wanna do the same for the number of employees, I can do equal sign. I know rows will do that. I click rows. Now this time it didn't tell, it didn't assume what I want. So I can highlight the rows that I want it to count, hit enter. Hmm, that's weird. It's wrong. Oh, rows, that's the difference. Okay, so I don't know what row does, but rows within a plural will count them. And I can create my own function as well. I can do equal sign. Uh, let's see, D, if I wanna find the average salary, it'd be D9 divided by D10, hit enter. And now it's calculated the average based on these two numbers here. And I think there's actually, a, there must be a built-in average. I'm gonna type in, yep, so if I do average, So yeah, so average is another shortcut. I don't know all the functions. I doubt many people do, but you can play around with the functions. I'm sure there's a list online. So again, all of those tools are really useful. Um, they have charts as well. So again, if I wanted to insert a, a chart with all this information, I can do insert chart. I should get a little pop up here. I want a pie chart. Maybe I want a bar chart. Um, so, so I'm going to highlight the information I want and then I'll do insert and it, it should be smart enough to figure out. Yeah, here we go. So I have a bunch of different options here. I'm not going to play around with it, but you can see right there it worked and I can move it around wherever I like. So you can see it's starting to get a little crowded here. <laughs> so that's one reason you might want to have a different sheet. So you can have all the information still in the same document, but you don't have to worry about you know, closing this document and opening, opening up another to get to this information. So I'm just going to see if I can, if I click on the top right, move to own sheet is an option. Now you can see I have my salaries sheet right here. I have a chart sheet that just got created that has just that chart, all right? So that's just, a very, very brief overview of Google Sheets. I personally don't use Google Sheets as often as I use Google Docs, so I'm not super familiar with all the tools, but um, if you're an Excel person, play around a little bit. I'm sure you'll find most of the functions that you're used to in Excel, you'll find in Google Docs. Um, oh, one thing I wanna mention. So uh, if, if you wanna print a sheet, here's one thing that um, is um, important to know. So say I wanted to print all this information. Um, I can click up on the print icon here. Oh, okay. All right, do you mind? I'm gonna mute you. Just, okay, some background noise. Okay, so I'm gonna highlight the information in my spreadsheet that I want to print. Click the print icon on the top left here. And you can see under this top option, print, I have my current sheet or I can select selected cells. So it's going to be the same because I don't have a ton of information, but um, if, if say that there was information on all of these cells here and it just kept going down and down and down for like a hundred rows, um, if I went to print and then I had it set to current sheet, um, the information would be a total mess. It would go off the sides and everything. So having that selected cells um, option is a good, is important there. And again, there's other basic formatting here like letter, it's change the paper size, change it to a portrait or landscape. 
Um, the scale is also important. So um, say you had you know, 10 more columns and the information was bleeding off the side of the edge, you can set the scale to fit to width and that will shrink all of the columns and it'll shrink, shrink all of your information to fit on one page instead of having it get cut off basically on one end and then having to start a new page that has where that information left off. So I just wanted to point that out as well. Okay, so if there are no questions about Google Sheets, I'm gonna move on. So again, to back up, you just click the icon on the top left. And we're back to Google Sheets. Now I'm going to move on to slides. So slides is their version of PowerPoint. So again, it looks very similar to what you've seen before. I have the templates at the top, create a blank document here on the top left. I have all of my previously created um, PowerPoint slides here down below. So if I click one, I could just jump right into it. Again, the layout should look pretty familiar to you. You have your formatting on the top row above it. Above that is a menu. On the left hand side, you see a little thumbnail of each of your slides. And if you click any of them, you can jump to that slide. You can create a new slide by clicking that plus sign right above it. So that'll create a blank slide. <clears throat> and you can create, uh, they have little formatting templates here. If you click that little arrow to the right of the plus sign. So if you wanted to create a slide with two columns, you can click that and then it has a blank slide with two columns. Okay. Um, so when you're creating a new document, if uh, one nice feature that'll kind of help you with um, just visualizing your presentation is this theme button here. So if you click theme, Google has about a dozen or so, maybe more, two dozen maybe, um, built-in themes for your entire presentation. So these are just nice if I click one of them, it'll apply a theme to the whole document. Now you can't see it on some of these slides because I've already messed around with them a little bit, but if I change the background, I'm sure. If I create a new slide, it should, yeah. So you can see I created a new slide and it applied that theme to the new slide. So the, the themes are just a nice way. If I click a new theme, it'll change you can see it, it applied a new kind of color scheme to all of my slides. So that's a nice way to just make your, uh, your slideshow a little more visually appealing. And you can click and arrange the slides by just clicking and dragging. So if I wanted this one up here, I can do that. I can move it all around. Um, transitions right here on the top center are exactly what they sound like. So transitions are how your presentation will go from one slide to the next. So if you wanna have like a dissolve animation or a fade animation or a slide animation, you can do that here. Um, and transition is also where you do object animations. So what that is, is if you had say like a bulleted list of information and you wanted each time you clicked to have a new, the next bulleted piece of information slide in, you can do that as well here. So I'll, I'll quickly show you what that looks like. So I make a bulleted list. And I'll click add animation. So I want it to, let's see, fly in from left on click. I'll hit play to get a little preview. So I click and then the whole paragraph comes in from the left. Now, say if I wanted it to come out one bullet at a time, I just <clears> click <throat> by, I just click this little checkoff box here by paragraph. So now we'll hit play. And now each time I click the next bullet will come in. Okay. So I know I'm going through this pretty quickly, but again, just open up a, a Google slide yourself and start messing around and it's it's pretty intuitive i'm sure you'll figure it out um, pretty quickly but um, again all, everything else you've learned in, in google docs that i've shown you before still applies here so you can insert images um, 
you can insert a video actually because it's a, a presentation. Um, they have their drawings, they have word art, they have lines and charts and diagrams. So these are all just nice little shortcuts. So if you wanted to quickly insert a diagram, you can do that as well. They have a whole bunch of different templates here. And you can just start double clicking to change the text here. So just play around with this stuff and uh, you'll get a lot of great ideas. A lot of really cool um, features that are built into it. A now, say, question, Alex. sorry, say that again. Quick question. If I create a PowerPoint here, could I add it to a G an email? Yeah, absolutely. Could so you, could you just explain how? Yeah, absolutely. So if you wanted to, um, to sh download it, you would, can go to file download and mm -hmm. you can see here, you can download it as a PowerPoint file. Okay. So it'll open up. So say you're, you're making your document at home and then you know you're gonna go to another place that ha has Microsoft PowerPoint, you can download it as a PowerPoint file and that way you know when you get to that place you're gonna be doing your presentation, you can open it up. Um, you can also download it as a PDF. So um, like you said, if you wanted to email it to somebody, downloading it as a PDF might look a little bit nicer than a, a PowerPoint document because they can quickly go through all the slides. Um, but you can see right above download, there is an email right. function. So if I clicked email this file, basically, well, you basically you just type in who you want to send it to, give it a subject line, and then the bottom option will give you an option of, of how you want to send the document. So the default is PDF, <clears throat> but you can also send it as a, a Microsoft PowerPoint file as well. And that document, the document will show up as an attachment in that email. And then just click send and that's it. Good question. And one more quick thing, if yeah. this would also be automatically saved to Google Drive. Exactly. So okay. I'll, I'll be getting into Google Drive next, but uh, you can see again, right at the top here, it says last edit was two minutes ago. So yeah. exactly like Google Docs, it's saving every time I make a change. If I click that, it'll show me the entire history of changes to the document every time. And you can see it's saved every minute or even more often, sometimes twice a minute. So again, super, super helpful. Okay. All right, so that's just a super quick run through of docs, sheets, and slides. Now I'm gonna go into uh, Google Drive, which is probably the most important because that's where all of your documents are getting saved. So I'm gonna back out of slides, go to my apps again, and Drive again is this triangle shaped icon. I'm gonna click that. All right, so the interface looks a little different this time. Um, at the very top, you see quick access. Now these are a, basically the last apps that you opened and you can see that's, that's true. I have my slideshow here, my intro to Google app spreadsheet and the test document I made all at the top, excuse me. Below that I have folders. So Google Drive is, um, you can think of it as basically a folder, like the same as you have on your computer, but it's just saved in the internet. So it, it's not saved on your computer, it's saved on Google's computer somewhere out in the mountains somewhere. So it, it's just a folder you can access from anywhere in the world, as long as you have internet access. Um, and just like the folders on your computer, you can have folders within folders and folders within folders within folders. You can organize it any way you like. If you don't like folders, you can just have a huge stack of documents here. Um, so that's that's really it. I mean, it's it's really really simple, but it's extremely useful and powerful. So, um, say I wanted to create a new folder of the documents that I just made today, I can click New up here on the top left, and I get a few options. So it gives me an, the top option is create a new folder. I'll click that, I'll name it um, Intro to Google Apps, Hit enter. And now I have a new folder called Intro to Google Apps. So 
I can put items in that folder a few different ways. I can click and drag right into the folder, let go. And then I just got a notification saying the document was moved into that folder. And if I double click that folder, I'll open it up and I can see that it's in there. I can go back to the previous screen by clicking either the back arrow in the web browser, or I can just click my drive here at the top. So this, this, uh, this, uh, this text at the top of the screen will show you basically the path that you're in. So you can see I'm in the folder intro to Google apps, which is inside my drive. So that's another useful way of navigating your drive if you get lost. All right, the other way to move a file into a folder is by right clicking on it. So say I want to move this intro to Google apps spreadsheet into that folder. I'll right click and I'll click move to, which is about halfway down. And then it'll take, ask me where I want to move it to. I'll click intro to Google apps, click move. And it did the same thing. It moved it right into that folder. So that's the way to move it around. You can move folders within folders too. So if I had my images folder here, I can move that inside of class documents. Now I'll open up class documents and you can see my images folder is inside of class documents now. And it's always up, the folders are always gonna be listed at the top. Okay. So I know if you're used to how files and folders work, this seems very basic to you, but I just wanted to go over that pretty quickly. Um, if you don't want to see previews of your documents, you can change it to just a simple list view at the top right. So right underneath the settings and the Google apps icons, there's this little, uh, it looks like a little chart icon. If I click that, now everything's listed um, just in a chronological, nice neat list order instead of seeing a preview of everything. All right, everything makes pretty much makes sense. I can go back to that preview um, view before that I had before by clicking that button again. And now I'm back to this again. All right. Uh, one other thing. So underneath on the left hand side here, you see my drive. That's where we are now. That's that's all of your documents. If you see shared with me underneath that. So if I click that, um, again, because like this is a dummy document, I don't have anyone shared anything with me yet. But if um, if someone had shared a document with you, a Google Doc or a spreadsheet or a slide or what have you, it would show up here. So you can just double click on that fi file and it'll open right up. So I just want to point that out. All right. Now, you Google Drive is just a storage container for any files you have. So anything you create in Google Apps gets saved to Google Drive automatically. But say there's a file that you didn't create in a Google App, like a Word document or a PDF or an image or something, and you want to put it in your Google Drive so you can access it anywhere, you can do it a couple of different ways. So I'm going to change the way I'm sharing my screen for one second. All right, can everyone see my full screen now? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm just gonna hide you for a second. Okay, so this cutting the cord document here, something I made for my cutting the cord program I ran the other day. Now, say I wanna put this PDF file in my Google Drive, I can just simply drag it right into the window and let go. And you can see it's uploading right now. And now it's there. So now I see that PDF is now in my Google Drive. So now, even though if I go to another computer where this file is not is not saved onto the computer, I can pull that document up by going into my Google Drive. So it's just a super simple way of, of being able to make your files accessible from any computer um, anywhere with an internet connection. It's also a nice way of sharing things. So again, when I, at the beginning of the class, I talked about all the different ways of sharing Google Docs and Google Sheets and things. You can do the same thing for anything you have saved in Google Drive. So now that 
this PDF file I just added to Google Drive is in my Google Drive, I can share it with anyone the same way I did as if it was a Google Doc. So I'll right click it and I'll click share. I can also do it by clicking the item and clicking the share button at the top here. Looks like a little person with a plus next to it. And this window should look familiar to you if you were paying attention earlier. It's exactly the same as if it was a Google Doc. I can email it to somebody, a link to be an editor or a viewer or a commenter, or I can get a link to make it available to the whole world. So that's another super useful feature of Google Drive. You can make any document accessible to anyone you want at any level you want. Um, any questions about Google Drive? Let me uh, go switch, switch my sharing back. So again, on the top left here, there's a few more shortcuts. So I showed you how to create a folder. Um, there's another way to upload files to Google Drive. By clicking File Upload, you can do it a more traditional way of you know, navigating to a file on your computer and clicking Import. And you can see it adds it that way. You can upload an entire folder. So if I click Folder Upload, click a folder, hit open, it'll say upload all 12 files to the site. Yep, just hit upload. Might take a little bit longer, but I can upload. So I just uploaded this entire folder with all of the folders within that folder right into Google Drive right there. All right, and again, you can create documents as well in Google Drive. So the same way I created documents by going to Google Docs and clicking blank or going to Sheets and clicking blank, I can do that from Google Drive as well by clicking New and then clicking Docs, Sheets, Slides, or Forms. Or More gives you access to a few more of their less popular apps. All right, any questions about Drive? I have 20 minutes left in the class. Does anyone have any Google Apps or questions up to this point? Thank you. I might be muted. I got a quickie for you, just related to uh, Google in general. Yeah. How many How many Gmails can we have on one account? And more importantly, could you just give me a quick look of how I could set up the second or third Gmail? Um, yeah, if I understand correctly, um, so every Google account is its own separate account. Yeah. You can you can link accounts. Um, you can link separate accounts in a, what's called a family group. Okay. And that gives access to well, whoever the whatever account created the family group has, is like the administrator of the family group. So you can wow. set different privileges for other accounts. So for instance, if I created a family group for my family, I can say. My wife has full access to all of my documents, but my son's Gmail account only has access to this and this and this. So um, that is probably the best way of doing what you're looking for. But if you want to create a new Google account, you would do it by just going to google.com. Obviously I'm signed in right now, so I have to sign yeah. out. Clicking sign in. Uh, I think so. If you get brought to this screen where it doesn't show like a create account, just right. click re remove an account. Right. And it's not going to delete this account, it's just going to remove the quick login access to it. Okay. And then now you have access to create an account. Okay. Um, another way you can do it is by opening up a private window or an incognito window in whichever, it depends on what you use. If you use Google Chrome, I think it's called incognito. Yeah, Google Chrome is an incognito window. Um, so if you go up to 
open up your web browser, click file, and then underneath new window should be like private window or incognito window. Um, it's not nefarious. It just means it's not going to save your, your cookies and things. And um, by cookies, I mean like your saved passwords and things like that. So if you open up an incognito window and go to google.com, it, it should just bring you right to this screen that you're looking at now. And, and it won't show any of your previously logged in Gmail accounts. So that's another way to do it. But yeah, so basically all, all Gmail accounts are separate in and of themselves, but you can gr group them together after the fact by doing a family share. I hope that, does that answer your question? Yeah, it kind of does. Uh, about a month ago, I was trying to set up a, a secondary email to use for different purposes. And mistakenly, I ended up creating a whole nother Google account, which, which is fine. Which is fine. I just have you know separate Google accounts now. It's it's no big deal. I just thought that I could set up several emails under the same account, but I I've achieved what I wanted to do. I just ended up being a different way of doing it. Yeah, there might be a way. I just don't know. Um, if you want to email me, I can try to look into that a little bit further. Okay. But uh, as far as I know, there isn't a way of creating an account within another account. But there might be. I don't know. As far as I know. There isn't a way. Of like it. I said, I was just looking to set up a separate Gmail. Period. And another another Gmail. Yeah. Uh, but that's all I'm looking to do. Which is but you, you could have as many Gmail accounts as you want. Like for instance, on my phone, I have, I think, four Gmail accounts in my Gmail app. Mm -hmm. you know, I have my personal. I have my business. I have uh, well, my my work. That's kind, of, that's kind of what I was looking to do. That's exactly what I was looking yeah. to do. So yeah. you, you can have you can have an unlimited number of Google accounts. Um, it's just a, you just have to create a new, just create a new account each time. Um, yeah. And then you can, again, you can create the family group to share documents, or you can just share them manually the way I showed you in the class. Mm -hmm. All right. Let me just, I think I'm still signed in. All right. So we have 15 minutes left. If there are no more questions, I'll just go through some of the other cool apps that are here. So I mentioned Google keep a few times. That's their note taking app. Oh, I have to sign back in again. Okay, so it's just a really basic note-taking app. Um, they have a dark theme, apparently. That's what it's advertising here. Let's see what that looks like. Ooh, kind of like that. All right, so you can just click take a note here at the top, start typing, give it a title. And it's just really, really simple. There's no formatting options. Um, you can you can add images and change the color of the note, and you can add collaborators as well. So you can share notes with others to add things. So like if you had a grocery list app, um, you can share it with somebody, and and they can add items as you go and and remove items, so that's nice. Um, you can pin notes, so this little pin icon on the top right, if I click that, now it's created a new category called pinned at the top. So basically your pinned notes just get priority over your other notes. They just get always bumped up to the top. Um, so the note, the keep, Google Keep, I use it all the time actually. Um, just because I have like a lot of, I have like a note with passwords. And I have a note with like, I have a grocery list note and a bunch of things that I don't want to create a Google doc for. I just want to have like a quick access to it. Um, and it, again, it's really useful because they're all of your notes always show up here with that little icon. So you can see my grocery list is here. My title of my note is here that I've changed the color. I can just quickly edit it, hit done. And now it's saved that. So. Google Keep, really useful. Uh, I went over Google Drive. Google Calendar is how I run my entire life because I can't keep all the things straight in my head. So Google Calendar is really, really great. You have your month calendar on the left. You're, you can set it by week, by day, um, by month. You can change the view. It'll, it has all holidays already built in. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, I like the week view. 
and you can add reminders or events by just clicking at random time at the time you want to add it, give it a name, set the, uh, the date and time. You can change the color of it. If you want to color code all of your events, that's what I do. I have all of my work events in green and my personal events in blue and my family events in pink. So it just organizes everything nice the way I like it. Um, you can set notifications. So as you're coming up to that event, you can say 30 minutes before I want to receive an email reminding me of this event or a text message. You can set all of that up here. Hit save. And now it's there. It's so now that is saved in your, uh, your calendar. Okay. So that makes sense. That should make sense. Um, let me go back to here. Maps, pretty straightforward. I'm sure you've used Google Maps on your phone a million times. Um, you can search anywhere in the world or you can ask for directions with this little blue directions app. So if I want to get from Sayville, New York to, I don't know, Bangkok. I don't know how to spell Bangkok, whatever. Bangkok Ranch in Florida. Babcock Ranch, I was spelling it wrong. It'll give me the directions all the way there. Um, and if you have this Google account saved on your phone, you can send the directions right to your phone by clicking send directions to your phone here at the top. I do this all the time, like I'll be at home and I'll research how to get somewhere and then I'll just send the directions to my phone because I like using Google Maps on a computer more than my phone. Um, you can print it under options, I think. No. How do you print it? Oh, print. So if I click this little menu on the left hand side, print is at the bottom. And it will give you, you can add notes along the way, but just click print again on the top right. And it'll give you a map as along with all the directions step by step. Looks pretty straightforward to get there. So there's only three steps. Um, so that's really useful. I love Google Maps. I use it all the time. Um, I talked about Google Photos. I'm not sure if I have any photos, but it's asking me to sign in again. Yeah, I don't have any photos in there right now, but basically it gives you a chronological list of all the photos that you've uploaded um, because it's Google that uses Google's AI to organize them as well. So it'll give you suggested albums by um, event or place or even by face. It scans all the faces in your photos and organ makes albums around uh, each person. So if I clicked my albums here, it'll show me like a grid of faces and I can click one of those faces and it'll show me every photo that has that face in it. It's a really, I mean, it's, I think it's really cool. It might seem creepy to some of you, but <laughs> I use, I find it pretty useful. I don't really care. I have nothing to hide from Google. So I don't care if they're looking at my photos. Um, okay, Alex, I have a question. Yeah. Um, so if you're taking photos on your phone, do those photos automatically update to drive or how does that work? Uh, yes, they do. Um, if you have an iPhone, it might be a little different. You might have to go into your settings and manually change your photo app to Google Photos from Apple Photos, but I don't think that's the case. My wife has an iPhone, and I believe all of her photos just automatically get uploaded to Google Photos. I have a, an Android phone, and I didn't have to do anything. Actually, Google Photos was pre-installed on my phone. I didn't even have to download the app. And every photo I take just gets automatically sent to my, my Google Photos. So the so answer is you, yes, it'll get automatically if, uploaded. Okay, so if you are concerned that you're using too much memory for the photos that you have on your phone and you delete those photos, you can still access them through the drive? Yep, exactly. So um, there's actually a, a button in Google Photos on the app that says free up space. 
and that button only appears after all of your photos that you've taken have been uploaded to Google Photos. So after it's every after it's uploaded every picture you've taken up to Google Photos, you'll see that little button appear. And if you click it, it'll erase all the photos off your phone, but keep them in Google Photos online. So you still have access to them from your Google Photos. So I use that all the time to free up space on my phone. And it works. Huh. Great. Okay, so, thank you. You're welcome. Um, but just keep in mind that that all of the photos that you're uploading to your Google Photos takes eats into that storage. Right. So I said you get 15 gigabytes for free, which is a lot of photos. But once you exceed that 15 gigabytes, then you have to upgrade the storage, and that's you. Google charges you, I think, two dollars a month or something for 100 gigabytes is the next tier. And then the next tier after that is, I think, 200 gigabytes and then 500 gigabytes or something like that. It's, yeah. the, same, it's the same as with Apple or um, Amazon does the same thing. After you exceed the free storage they give you, they charge you a monthly rate uh, for more storage. But So how do you know how much storage you have consumed? Uh, good question. Go to your Google Drive. Uh, although there's two ways. You can go to your Google Drive, which is where I am now, and you can see storage is on the left-hand side here. And it says it's I'm using 22.7 megabytes of my 15 gigabytes, so essentially nothing. Yeah. If I click storage, it should give me a, a further... Okay, I guess it doesn't do it here, but um, the other way to do it so this is a quick way. It'll tell you how much you're using. The other way is to go to your Google account. So if you click on your name on the top right and go to manage your Google account and then go to, it's been a little while since I've been here. I think it's data and personalization. Is that it? Okay. Okay, so I'll do that again, just so I can walk it through in case you missed it. So on the search bar at the top, just click store or type in storage. I guess it's under, I, I don't know where it, it's, it's contained on this, this menu here. Keep on sharing maybe. Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't know where it's, hidden here, but you can find it by just typing in storage, hit enter. And this will say you have your 15 gigabytes of free storage. You can, and then it'll break it down by how much Yeah. by each app. So you can see Google Drive is using that 0.02 gigabytes. Now, um, I'm glad you asked this because there's, that's important. So um, with Google Drive, any documents you make in Google Docs, Google Spreadsheets, Google Slides, Google Notes, any any of their apps, none of that counts towards your 15 gigabytes. That's all free. So that's another really nice feature of using the Google platform is all I like my personal Google Google account I've had for probably 12 years. I have hundreds of Google Docs and Google spreadsheets that I've made over the years. And none of it has contributed towards my 15 gigabytes of free storage. The only things that count towards your storage are things that you upload to the drive yourself. Like, um, let me go back. Like these images and that I uploaded earlier, those count towards your storage and your photos count towards your storage. That's it. So that's, that's really important. So, um, and your Gmail as well, all of your emails, they do not count towards your storage. The attachments do. So if you have an, you know, an attachment with a hundred photos, those photos count towards your storage, but all of the emails you send and receive themselves do not. 